Shakespeare's plays can be sorted into three categories. There's the tragedies, which start with someone saying, well, this can't end well, and ends with them saying, called it. There's the comedies, where mistaken identities and cross-dressing usually run rampant. And there's the histories, which make people sad like the tragedies, but just because they have to learn about history. Boom! Got him! The plot of this play focuses on two groups of characters. This is Henry. He's the king of England. And here's the lead antagonist of our play, Henry. Oh, but we're gonna call him Hotspur. On the other side of the story, we have King Henry's son, Henry. Nope, nope, we're not doing that. We're gonna call him Harry. Or Hal. Or maybe. It's 2020. No one's gonna get a call me maybe joke. Get out of here, self-criticism narwhal. I thought it was funny. And our fourth main character, and I swear if this one is also named Henry, Falstaff. Oh. I like him. There's other characters running around in this show, but they're mostly aligned with one of these four. And the plot is pretty much split in two, between one focusing on King Henry and Hotspur, and the other focusing on Hal and Falstaff. The core conflict of the play revolves around a brewing struggle for the seat of power. King Henry has made a series of political decisions that have ostracized Hotspur's family, the Percys, as well as several other key allies. These include Hotspur's father, Welsh and Scottish leaders, and Hotspur's uncle, the Earl of Worcester. Oh, I get it. He's a bottle of Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, I guess that might be funny. Seriously. Self-criticism, Narwhal, can I, like, have some space? Hotspur prepares for war, but he finds that he has less allies than he expects. Dear son, this letter is to inform you that I will be sick on Tuesday. Good luck with your big rebellion, XO Dad. At the same time, we get to learn about Falstaff, who is a great character, and Henry, I mean, Hal, who is just a terrible son. Now you might think he's terrible because he's the future king and spends his time with miscreants and criminals, but no, he's terrible because he's only doing those things to seem more impressive when he changes his ways and steps up. For now though, he's satisfied doing normal things like stealing his friend's horse. Ugh, my kingdom for a whore. No, 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 that's not this one. Their side of the plot revolves around a stagecoach robbery that the crew has planned. This turns into a practical joke as Hal robs his friends instead. You know, like the kind of thing a future king would do. Falstaff doesn't realize that it was Hal that robbed him, though, and he tries to brag about it later. It was like 800 guys who were ninjas and had lightsabers. Uh, actually, it was just me. Yeah, I knew that. News of the Civil War comes through, and Hal decides that it's time to start acting like someone who's going to become king. Now, it might feel like these two plot lines are completely different plays. One is a serious story about a rebel gathering allies and preparing for war, while the other is about a terrible son and his cool friend Falstaff. I think these plot lines both work independently of each other, and that makes this a great play for any students or new directors that want to take on Shakespeare. I'd recommend breaking it down like this, depending on which story you want to follow. I wouldn't do this for a full production, but it's a good way of trying out Shakespeare without having so much text to deal with. Now before we can get back to the action, we meet the Archbishop of York for his first and only scene in this play. He's also a conspirator against King Henry, but his plans are going far beyond the upcoming battle. Hey, I'm gonna send some letters to my allies, so even if Hotspur fails, that's only gonna be part one of this rebellion. Yeah, that's... that's real subtle. Hal volunteers to fight Hotspur one-on-one, -on -one, rather than cost soldiers their lives. Worcester is sent to deliver the message, but he'd rather have a full-on fight. Hey, they called you a nerd. Okay, that does it. We're attacking them. Also, Hal said you could fight one-on-one -on -one instead if you wanted. Oh. Well, you could have said that like 20 seconds ago. The battle begins. Hotspur hunts for Hal, Falstaff does his best to avoid combat, and Hal saves his father, finally earning the respect he easily could have had all along. Hotspur finally catches up with Hal, and Hal kills him. Although Falstaff doesn't waste any time stealing credit for doing that. The play ends with the characters knowing that the rebellion has only just started, and that there will be more battles in their future. Now there is still one lingering question. Is this play historically accurate? Kind of. The Percy family did lead a rebellion against Henry IV, but a lot of smaller details are embellished. Falstaff didn't even exist. Although it is assumed that his character is based off of a man named Sir John Oldcastle and named after a soldier named Sir John Fastoff. So yeah, the s'more you know. But this was only half the story. 
I'm going to step away from Henry IV for a little bit, but in a few episodes we'll return for part two of Harry Potter and the Cursed... I mean Henry IV. I thought it was funny, okay? Okay.